We are back for the Colonel Crawford portion of tonight's Coach's Corner East, and so glad you joined us tonight on the 22nd. We are into fall, and the weather certainly shows that as temperatures have dropped and the rain has returned. Our show is brought to you in part by Stephen Chuck Keller, Keller Auto Parts, your Napa dealer, Uptown Galleon and Crestline. Marie Mounts at the Platinum Insurance Agency, your progressive agent, 131 Hardingway East, Uptown Galleon. And Joe Kleiman Associates at the Galleon Office of First Federal Bank of Ohio. Filling in for uh, Coach Ryan Teglovic and the Colonel Crawford Eagles tonight, it is offensive coordinator Jake Bruner once again. And Coach Bruner, so glad to have you here. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks for having us, Mike. Interesting game last week. Uh, you came off the loss to Cary and uh, had to go back on the road to Wyandotte County over to Upper Sandusky, a, a much improved Ram team uh, compared to years in the past. And, uh, it was a battle for the first half. I was uh, watching the score stream, and I'm like, no way, it's that close. I, I didn't expect it. I thought that the Eagles would bounce back. I knew Upper Sandusky was better. And uh, was it 20 to 13 at half? And then all of a sudden, I kept looking, and there was more points for the Eagles, and more points for the Eagles, and more. And then I was listening to the wrap-up on the way home, and the next thing you know, it's 60 to 19. Uh, giving the Eagles the win. They are now 4-1 and one overall, 1-1 one and one in the Northern 10 Conference. Tied after the first quarter, 7-7. Seven seven. Tied late in the second quarter until Lincoln Mollenkopf had a one-yard run with 19 seconds left to put you up 20-13.5. And, and then you outscored the Rams 40-6 to six in the second half. So, like, did you fall asleep as offensive coordinator in the first half and decided to wake up in the second? And I mean that tongue-in-cheek, of course. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, first of all, give Coach Hall. I think he's doing a great job at Upper Sandusky. They got they got sixty one guys out. They played a lot of young kids the last couple of years, and uh, you know they still have some young kids, but there's a lot of veteran offense and defense alignment um, on their teams. And they had two nice receivers, and their quarterback does a heck of a job. I mean, they do a great job with RPO and you, uh, and they got us a couple times. Uh, they got us on a couple deep balls and and, and, and did some different things. And credit our defense because you know. They got us those two, those two, those two scores, but we really settled in after that. And uh, you know, offensively, really besides our first drive, which we stalled out after a penalty um, in the red zone, and obviously we didn't punt much after that. So um, we were just kind of we were cautious in the first half because we felt like we needed just to run the ball, eat the clock, and so we kind of found our way defensively, and that's kind of what we did. Okay, uh, Cam Moore, your quarterback, nine of eleven for 101 yards. Caden Holman. 13 to 21 for them, 356 yards and one TD, just a sophomore. Were you impressed with him? I really impressed. Uh, his two, uh, the two throws that I remember that were deep balls, our coverage wasn't really bad. I mean, it was it was, it was pretty good. He put the ball in the middle. Um, and he did a great job with the RPOs as well. Um, I do think, did he did he have a pick or two? I believe I think he so. did. I think, I think he did. I mean, uh, eventually we kind of just settled in, but they do a really good job with the RPOs. And, uh, you know, if they had even a better running game, they'd be really dangerous from a standpoint of that. Uh, Coach Hall did a great job with Upper Sandusky. And, uh, you know, they're going to be a team up and coming because their seventh and eighth grade is pretty good. The freshmen are pretty good. Um, they got some players. You know, just got to keep kids out and keep kids motivated and go for that. So. Offensively, uh, your identity seems to be this year, especially breaking in a new quarterback. Why pass if we don't have to? The running has been successful. And when you got a guy like Lincoln Molenkoff that's uh, toting the ball, among other people, but 25 rushes, 310 yards, four TDs. Matt Kleiner, 10 rushes, 104 yards, one TD. Micah Thomas, two rushes, 55 yards, and a TD. I mean, you got so many weapons on the ground, and they're running behind a really talented offensive line. It's got to be like a dream for an Offensive well, I mean, like I said, the first first half, we really we were concerned that we were going to be in a shootout, and we wanted to kind of slow the game down and just take our time and run the ball. And and they took the ball first, so we wanted to you know we had the ball coming out in the second half a little bit, so we wanted to eat the ball, and eat the clock a little bit, you know, run the ball, be safe with it. And, and, you know, we were getting three, four, five, six yards every carry. Those carries in the second half turned into 60-yard runs and those things. But like the second half, I think the first pass we threw in the second half was a touchdown. To, to Carter Valentine. So we just picked our poison on what was there, but like our offensive line did a nice job. I mean, there's things we can improve on, but we did a nice job of handling different looks and just kind of running the ball at us. And Matt Kleiner deserves, deserves a lot of credit because he, he does a lot of blocking. And obviously he ran for 150 yards Friday night too, but um, you know he he really does a nice job blocking for Lincoln Malkoff as well as the offensive line. Would it be fair to say that in the Northern 10 Conference, uh, Cam Moore has one of the easiest jobs? 
when you're just handing off. I mean, you, you rushed 47 times for 548 yards. I mean, yeah, he's got to call the plays. He's got to read defense. But literally, he's got so many weapons that he can just hand the ball to and sit back and kind of watch. Well, Mike, I don't want you to get him give him false hope. I tell him being a quarterback is the second hardest job in all of sports. Mm-hmm. Because the first hardest job is to hit a baseball. Yeah. You know, you know, out of 10, if you hit it three times, you're a Hall of Famer. That's right. So that's the first thing. The hardest thing is to play quarterback because all of us, including me, love to play armchair quarterback. Why didn't you throw to that guy? He's open. That's right. And everybody in the stands thinks it's so easy to play quarterback. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And three of these guys at this table probably think it's easy to play quarterback. One of them knows it's not that easy to that's play That's right. Quarterback. And we're going to talk about so, that. <laughs> um, you know, here's the thing. You know, it's a tough job no matter what you do offensively. Just because for, for us, you have to communicate to everybody. The offensive line, what's the protection? What's the routes? What's the RPOs? What's the run game? Who's getting the ball? What formation? So, yeah, Cam's done a good job at handling that aspect of it but yeah it was an easier job for him Friday night I'd sure 650 yards of total offense and th- the statistics are just mind-blowing to me you're averaging 8.7 yards per carry as a team uh, you've accumulated over 2,000 yards of total offense uh, <laughs> in, in five games that's over 400 yards per game and you're the top scoring team in the N10 averaging 49.2 yards per game and then when you look at Lincoln Molikoff individually, he's rushed for almost 1,000, 870 yards in five games, 174 per game, 10.6 per carry. If you carry the ball and, and you're averaging 10 points, that's a first down every time you touch the ball. That's a, a good thing to have, and he's got 16 TDs for sure. Yeah, you're, you're starting to sound, I'm going to start sounding like Nick Saban pretty soon. You're giving all our kids all, all these great things to say about it. It's like rat poison. You're just going to take it all in their head. You know, listen, we're, we're not going to have those stats every game. You know that. That's right. just, I, And I'm shocked that it, it turned into that because I'm going to be honest with you calling the plays it didn't feel like it was that many yards Friday night our kids did a good job handling it our defense and special teams really did play well um you know we returned a kick return for a touchdown Friday night the guy behind me right beside me did a great job doing that we got a little penalty on a little nothing but that's how it works sometimes what was impressive is that the next play our kids ran a 45 yard rush right after that so they they, they moved on the next play and they handle that, and we're, we're going to have to be successful Friday night, but it won't be that successful. I can tell. I know Steve Humber won't let that happen. <laughs> I understand that completely. Uh, you are listening and tuning in to Coach's Corner East on the home of Iconic Rock, Q92.7 WQEL, and I'm visiting with the Colonel Crawford Eagles. We'll take just a quick moment here to recognize some of our fine patrons before we talk to the young Eagles around the table. The Burkhart family at the Burkhart Farm Center, your Case IH dealer, straight west of Galleon on the Manette and Winchester Road. Mike Kleinite at Ag Credit Resident. Residential Lending, Besiris, Mount Gilead, and Marion, and Sweet Baby Ray Jones at Ohio Door and Sash, 120 South Street in Galleon, Ohio. First up, we have sophomore uh, Trevor Vogt, and Trevor, thanks so much for coming tonight. I certainly appreciate it. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing really well, and uh, I wanted to get to this point, and, and Coach Bruner kind of led the witness here a little bit, but you were competing for the quarterback position with Cam Laura this summer, yep. and it didn't work out, uh, but... You know, the mentality, as I've got to do this over the last few years, and the mentality that, that Coach Teglovic and the coaching staff have, have, have talked about is the 111. Just do the job that you're being asked to do. And based on what I'm hearing and seeing, you didn't pout about it. You just got after it, and you're doing your own job. Talk about uh, kind of that feeling of moving from one to the position you're in now. Well, I was expected to play quarterback at the beginning of the season, expected to learn it all, get it all down. And I think I did a pretty good job with it, but Cam Moore, he's a great quarterback. He's done really great for us. So they asked me to move the receiver, and I did. I didn't complain and didn't really care. So is it really that hard to, to be a quarterback at, at the high school level? It is pretty hard to play quarterback, yes. you got to read the defense, run your offense, know every position. So you come off a, a really tough and likely disappointing loss to a really good carry team. Then you go to Upper Sandusky on the road again, and you get kind of punched in the mouth a little bit in the first half. And are you thinking, gosh, hey, have we lost our mojo? Have you thought about, did you think about that at halftime? No, we kind of kind of just needed to calm ourselves down and get going, get our offense moving, get some stops. And then that's what we did. So we came out harder and punched them in the mouth and put some points up. So uh, this week, an interesting foe in uh, arguably your biggest rival, a team that you beat last year uh, at, at their place for the first time in forever. 
uh, and a team that's getting better in Winford uh, coming to your place. Uh, what do you expect? Uh, I, I, I mean, I can tell you what I think is going to happen, but I want to hear your words. Well, I expect a dogfight. It's like that every year, whether or not either team's good. It's so it's a rivalry, and you can't expect anything less than there to be a big, big game. Yeah, for sure. Well, good luck, and, and have a lot of fun with this too. Thank you. You bet. Up next, we have uh, Xander Fowler. Hi, Xander. How are you? Uh, pretty good. How are you doing? Doing really well. Thanks for coming. And uh, position on the team? On um, defense, I play nose. Okay. And. Uh, are you impressed so far with the, where your defense is and, and the things that you guys are doing on that side of the ball? Take away the carry game a little bit, but everything else that you're doing? I mean, all the media people talk about your offense, but the defense is keeping people out of the end zone. Talk about it. Yeah, I mean, our defense, we aren't doing too horrible. We're stopping the ball. And I say we could improve on our pass rush a little bit. Mm, just not being able to get to the quarterback or what? Yeah. Okay. So Winford comes calling, uh, a team that struggled with uh, a couple non-league games uh, against some really, really good teams, but have put up 142 points in the last two weeks. Does that concern you from a defensive standpoint? A little bit, but not really. I think if our defense keeps our heads in it and everyone does their job, we'd be all right. Okay, very good. Well, enjoy the game, have fun, and good luck to you. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. Next up, we have Isaiah Studer. Uh, Isaiah is a junior, and thanks for coming. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? Doing really well. Position on the team? I'm a D-tackle. D-tackle, okay. And uh, this defense has, has just done some really nice things. Uh, does it get uh, – because you've had some quick scoring. Right, you, coach talked about you know you, you get something called back and then bang you're gone. And when the team scored 60 points and there's a lot of long runs and things like that, you're not getting a lot of breaks defensively. Uh, you got to go right back out there. Is that hard to, to you know when you want a little bit of a blow on the sideline, get your head together, get your air back a little bit? Is that tough getting right back out there, or you welcome it? Yeah, it kind of is, but being out on the field is what it's all about. Yeah. Just getting out there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Winford's interesting from the standpoint that uh, they're starting to find a passing game. Uh, running game has been maybe not what most people are used to over there. Uh, what do you think you have to stop and your defensive unit has to stop to be successful on Friday against the Royals? I think improving our pass rush, like keeping our lanes on the, on the inside and just inside run as far as interior defense. And, other than that, there's not a whole lot I can think about. All right. Well, good luck. Enjoy it. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Thank you. Finally, Cole Bryan is uh, a junior. And I said you were a junior. You're not. You're a sophomore. I apologize for that. Uh, Cole, you are a junior, correct? Yes. And uh, positions on the team? I uh, play offensive side tackle. Okay. Uh, talk about just being part of that offensive unit that is just putting numbers up, that it's destroying light bulbs on scoreboards because it just is rapidly changing. Talk about that a little bit. It's great to be a part of that and know that you're helping with it and the team watching them play. It's great to watch everyone on the offense helping together to get those points put up there. You're five weeks in. You've accumulated over 2,000 yards of offense. You're a part of that because you're on the line. You're opening holes. Can it get better? Uh, yeah, it could get better. We could block our blocks a little better. We could always get better. There's always room for improvement. So when you have a team like Winford come in that uh, is starting to find its way a little bit, uh, ball control is going to be huge. You're, you're going to, and, and uh, I know Coach won't tell me anything, and he doesn't want anybody listening. And but I'm imagining when you're that successful on the ground and it makes the clock keep running, you're going to kind of going to continue to want to do that and throw where you have to. Uh, what's going to be the key to to keep that offense rolling for you? Just to control the ball, make sure we're doing good, keep the ball in our hands, and not give up any unwanted turnovers. Yeah, can't have turnovers, can't have penalties to get you behind the sticks either, right? No, we can't. Run. Yeah, so you got to keep the hands in and you got to keep the hands open. Yes, we do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, very good. Well, good luck to you. Have fun this weekend, and thanks for stopping by. I certainly appreciate it. We'll take another break here before we come back and talk to uh, Jake Bruner of the Colonel Crawford Eagles. Our show is brought to you in part by Lee Primal and Brad, Brad Seibert, excuse me, at the Plymouth Insurance Group, Galleon and Bucyrus, North Central State College, Mansfield, and the Crawford Success Center, North Walnut Street, across from the courthouse in Bucyrus, and Phil and Sue Shrek at Phil's Deli, just east of Pizza Hut, at the bridge in Galleon. And before we get to this week, Coach, uh, your 
junior varsity team, uh, who probably got some time again in on Friday night, uh, defeated Upper Sandusky 30-14. Uh, to 14. Your JV team now 3-2 and two overall, 1-2 and two in the Northern 10 Conference. And uh, just talk about uh, the fact that those kids are getting time Friday, so they're getting a Friday night experience, and then turning around and a lot of them are playing the whole game on Saturday. Uh, does there seem to be any letdown Saturday morning after playing a little bit Friday? Because, let's face it, JV football is a little anticlimactic compared to the lights of Friday night and the bigger crowd. How are they reacting to that? Well, it just depends if you're, if you're it's a, a game at Smithville or at Cary, that Saturday morning is a little rougher. Yep. Um, it's, you know, I think it's always tough to get kids up. You know, Friday night lights are, are the, the greatest thing to me that there is. So Saturday morning is always a little harder to get up. But, you know, once, once the game gets moving, I think our kids are pretty competitive. And, and our kids have done a really nice job at the JV level this year. I mean, we've lost two games, but both those games were really close. And it was it was a, it was a dog fight. And we had some kids in, in the early part of the season. And one of those losses that we needed those kids to stay for the varsity because we had some kids out. So it was really, really about that. But, you know, JV football and freshman football really is just about getting people reps. Get opportunities. I mean, you can take those JV records sometimes and just say oh, they are what they are. Because a lot of guys got guys playing. We got some guys that are playing juniors that are good junior football players that probably would be starting for other teams. Mm -hmm. They're playing on the JV team, but they're gonna be heck of a football players next year for us. And then you know you can kind of cross that with some freshmen they're playing some things like that. So. Yeah, very good. So week six, uh, Winford comes to town, the Battle of the Iron Plow, a, a game that was uh, just a great game last year over at Winford. You win by one point. Uh, Carter Valentine makes a big interception late in the game to seal the deal. Uh, Winford had a little bit of a tough start. They, they start their non-league season one and two, which is uncustomarily uh, odd for them. They're now three and two overall, two and zero oh in the Northern 10 Conference. Uh, Gabe Halbert just does a nice job with that group year in, year out. Uh, he, he makes uh, kids into football players. Uh, they're very, very successful. Last week, uh, they beat uh, or, or, uh, Buckeye Central handily 70 to eight after beating Cyrus 72 to 20 something the, the week before, so they're putting up some numbers. And uh, both uh, both their losses have come against teams with a combined record of, of 10 and 0. You got uh, Lucas, who's one of the premier small school teams in this area, and then Oxego, that's going to go deep in the playoffs for sure. Uh, and they're now averaging 37.6 points per game, giving up 24 points per game. Uh, Kobe Allen, 51 of 77 passing for 819 yards, 10 touchdowns, and an interception. Second leading passer in the N10 behind Holman, who you just saw from Upper Sandusky. And, Jaron Filiator now, uh, 19 receptions for 326 yards, two TDs, and Kendall Blair is the leading rusher for them, 184 yards on 29 totes. And offensively, they got some weapons, and they can do some things. And what worries you about that? Well, number one, like you said, I give a lot of credit to the Woodford coaches. I mean, I think when the year started, first of all, Otsego and Lucas are tremendous programs right now. And, uh, you know, I think probably the biggest thing that I see on film is they've now discovered who they're, the right people to be playing on both sides of the ball are. You know, sometimes as a coach, you're not sure how people are going to fit. And they have some young guys in the offensive line, but they, they've moved some people around, and they're playing the right guys. And those guys have been around a long time, know what they're doing. And, you know, sometimes it takes coaches to you give a kid a chance and they think he can do this, and then you find out now he can't. And I think they've got the right people playing. That's, I think, one of the biggest successes of their of their staff already. And you can tell. I mean, they scored 142 points in the last two, two weekends. You know, so I don't care who they're playing. That's a lot of points. And, uh, you know, they, they have, obviously, the skill. When you can name four or five players coming back on each side of the ball from the area, you know, that tells you as a coach they're going to be pretty solid. And, and you know, Winford, a lot of people maybe not used to a 3-2 and two record right now, but that's a good football team. They've got good weapons. We're going to be in for a dog park Friday night. Um, they have great coaches, and it's going to be a tough, tough challenge for us. One of those kids you mentioned, uh, their Mike linebacker, uh, Brian Crabtree, who defensively is leading the N10 in tackles with 58, right behind your player, Carson Victor, with 57. They've transitioned him now to the offensive side and more of kind of like a slot guy uh, that is mainly asked to block, but doing a very effective job with it. Right. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, but uh, he, he is, he's kind of helped them with the offensive line. And, and like you said, he's kind of a wingback type player, but he is blocking. And obviously, he's, I feel like he's been at, 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 at Winford for seven years you know, as, a, as a player because it's like he's never graduated. Right. Um, you know, he is a very thick player. He plays downhill. He is a very aggressive hitter. And uh, he gets to the ball. You know, we got to find somebody to get a hat on him. And, and offensively, does a great job trapping and, 
and they're running with their counter tray and things like that. So, uh, I'm certainly not the smartest football uh, student that's walking the face of the planet, and you know more than I do. But in big games like this, I would think it's going to come down to line of scrimmage. Right? You know, I think so. I think there are a couple things. It's you know, who's going to win the turn turnover battle. Who's uh, who's not going to have the costly penalty? The penalties. Teams are going to get penalties. I mean, who's going to have the costly penalties that maybe could be a burden? And then, like you said, who, who's going to be more physical? Who's going to dominate the line of scrimmage? You know, third and two, fourth and ones that, that are coming out. And it, you know, two two programs that that you know have a history together. Uh, their coaches do a great job. It's it's going to be a it's going to be an fight. I imagine in the locker room and in practices, there's not a lot that you have to say to the kids to get them hyped up for this one. It kind of takes care of itself, doesn't it? I agree. I mean, I think our kids know that they you know they want to win. They, we know that their focal point of Woodford's off season was was us and, and their loss to us last year. And, and when you say that it, uh, it's been decades, times ago, now be careful now. We, that was when I was a senior. <laughs> So okay. that makes me feel old. Well, I'm, I'm even older than that. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, good luck. Yeah, it, it'll be our game awesome. of the week on WBCO. Jared Moore and Tim Byrie will be over there at uh, Gary Field. It should be a great atmosphere. Uh, I believe you're having a hog roast, too. So uh, I know that doesn't concern you. But, uh, it's always something. Yeah, it's, and, and I think that's great. You get people out and uh, have a great meal as well. But uh, let alone the, the lights on in uh, North Robinson. It's going to be a great atmosphere. They're, they're going to have the FFA pork loin. I'm giving a little plug here. Yeah, FFA great. pork loin. Uh, dinner, Mr. Josh Schieber, Winford grad, our FFA teacher, come out for $8. He'll be proud that I said that to him, yeah. Yeah, so. well, hey, let, let's face it. There, there's there's relations in both schools, uh, marriage relations, family relations. Thing. It, it, it's a rivalry, yes. you got a trophy, yes. But it's a, a very respectful rivalry, I think. And, and, and the kids will lay it on the field. Yep. They'll leave it all there. Yep. Thanks for having us, Mike. Yep, thanks for coming. We'll be right back with the Crestline Bulldogs right after this.